I crushed some fucking ramen though. Yeah. Already. He <laughs> crushed ramen? That's it? No, 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 wait, no, I'm just, I, I crushed that's, it. I'm, I'm half asleep and still, I never ate ramen today. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I ate ramen last night. Alright, what's up guys? Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Adam. And this is Clock, Stock, and Barrel. So, gang, we've been talking about this watching some previous videos. It is new to my collection. I am very quickly falling in love with it. And having previous watch experience, I can say that I genuinely like this watch. And it's uh, doing something that another watch did for me a little while ago. I mentioned it was the Sin 556i. Yeah. Um, it's perfect. What are you wearing, by the way? I am wearing a, another Oris, uh, not the 65 in review today, but I'm wearing an Oris TT1. Uh, so this is the uh, generation just before the Oris Aquas. It's a beautiful watch. Um, I got the blue bezel, blue dial. We're totally turning into Oris fanboys now. You know it's what? going from Seiko to Oris. And by the way, guys, I'm wearing a, a Lynn Vertolin, which is a, actually a, a boutique luxury, luxury piece. Um, ridiculous bracelet there. Uh, a good really friend of mine, gorgeous. Jared, lent this in uh, so we could review it. So this is the Thank Lynn Verdelin Limited Edition 3-timer. Thank so, you, Jared. Thanks, Jared. It's really nice. It's very you. cool. I just want you to know we dropped it a couple times. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's fine. It was just in the toilet, so <laughs> it should be fine. I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, guys, uh, we're here today to talk about Oris. I am becoming a fanboy. You know why? Yeah, me too. Oris makes good watches. Oris, sponsor us. <laughs> we will talk about your watches every day. We'll go to conventions. Don't worry. We'll be your, we'll be your spokespeople. Um, so, gang, Oris is a brand that's been around for I don't know how long. Maybe it's on the back of this watch. It's on They've been around for a while. Long they, time. I have a Oris from 1945. Remember? So, gang, it's an old Swiss brand, and uh, Swiss is synonymous with quality for one reason or another. Um, and, and, and the same holds true for Oris today. It's it's a quality watch, and um, yeah. I'm gonna let Adam go ahead and take on his uh, first impressions before I give you my thoughts. I've been wearing the watch for quite a while now. I really enjoy it. It's a it's a phenomenal watch. Um, um, before we get into Adam's impressions, uh, we're gonna go over a few of the specifications of this watch. Uh, it's very similar to the rest of their dive watch lineup, but uh, yeah, guys. So we'll just quickly rattle off all the boring stuff. Uh, all stainless steel, stainless steel bra bracelet too. Unidirectional rotating black DLC coated bezel, which is very, very cool. Gets, has that vintage feel to it, we'll talk about. Uh, black dial, of course, luminous hands and uh, markers. Got the really, really cool Arabic numerals at 369. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? It's an automatic movement with a 38 our power reserve, it, it, it uses Salida. So we're rocking the Salida SW200. It's, again, guys, and it's a modified Salida, so it's a high-grade uh, high Salida SW200, and it's been modified by Oris. I, I don't remember the exact model number. It's actually the same movement that's inside of my TT1 and your Aquas. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, screw down cap crown, uh, 40 millimeter case size, which is perfect. Yes, that is the uh, 42 millimeters, which are the colored variants. Um, well, so there's a multitude of colors of those. Yeah. And then you have this this style at 40, and it's only 40. Right, with 13 millimeter case thickness. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that is in that dome sapphire crystal, um, so it wears a lot thinner than the, than the 13 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Bandwidth is 20 millimeters. Uh, and a water resistance of 100 meters. And guys, I wish I could tell you what this tapers down to, but this is I part want to of say their it's uh, almost positive at 16. 60, yeah. It's, so this is part of their heritage lineup. Um, so not only do you get a steel bracelet, it's a riveted steel bracelet with a uh, punch and links. And it's and amazing. It's, yeah, I mean, you know what's funny? I put. Let's this start off with the bracelet. That, those are all the specs. So let's talk about this damn bracelet because that's one of the most charming parts. Yeah. About this Oris well, 65. Yeah, give, give me your impression. I mean, it's... Yeah. Um, guys, so I briefly saw this uh, it, during the summer, and I, I just remember seeing the bracelet and thinking it was so awesome. Um, and then I left the store and kind of never <laughs> really saw one again. Yeah. Um, but then coming here and seeing this again, now I remember why I was so obsessed with the bracelet. So it has this... I want to say Oris is one of, like, the 
major brands that kind of started this rivet thing going again. Now, now the new Tudor Black Bays have them with the in-house movement. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But this rivet bracelet, as you guys know, is kind of like a, a 60s, I think like early 70s era sort of uh, dive, 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 you know, you know It takes what, it, what would regularly be just a, some sort of like an oyster style bracelet. Right. It gives it a punch of character. That, and you can see it when you look at this watch. It just has so much character. And a lot of the old Rolexes have, you know, the 50s Rolexes have these rivet bracelets. Um, and I, you gotta love that taper, man. I love I love when bracelets and, and leather straps taper down mm -hmm. for, you know, watches that are like 42 and under. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, this thing is so skinny. It, it literally tapers down. I'm almost positive it's 16 millimeters. Yeah. Like, and to go from, from 20 to 16... I mean, that's something else. Pretty drastic. What's pretty cool, too, is they really, they maintain this whole vintage aesthetic, too, um, and this heritage with the bracelet. You can see it doesn't just kind of smoothly, evenly taper down. There, there are distinct kind of notches where every single bracelet um, pops down. I don't know about a millimeter or every two. Every single link, that is. Yeah, it. every single link all the way down to the clasp, and I think I think that's really cool. And I'll say that this bracelet, even though it uses a pin and collar system, um, for you guys that like to size your bracelets yourself, it was it was really easy to do. It didn't take me much effort. I was had I had the size almost instantaneously. It uses an amazing clasp with these micro adjustments that are very practical and they actually work to help. Make very this close fit. too, which is great. Yeah, it, it fits perfectly in the clasp, by the way. It uses this double pin uh, security system. I yeah, don't know, I don't know what awesome. they're calling this tech, but it is very awesome. Uh, again, you know, they're always revolutionizing the game with their, their designs and their redesigns. And, uh, you know, this is modeled after, it's important to know, this is part of their heritage collection because it's modeled after one of their earlier original dive watches. It looks very similar to this. It's a little bit smaller, and the dial layout is slightly different. I believe it has a date window, but it's mm. at the 3 o'clock. Um, I could be wrong, or it might just be, uh, I think it might have the date absent, but I, I believe it's at the 3 o'clock. Um, but it's very similar stylistically to this, and when it came out, I think it was 2015, it was a huge shock, and uh, it, it was, you know, it, it, and it, what's also interesting to note is it only came out on a tropical rubber strap, and then they started yeah. introducing new straps. Which options. is amazing too, by the way, that tropical yeah. is so soft, and yeah. So, so you have that option, uh, you have the canvas strap, I also own that, you now have the riveted bracelet, which this is going to stay on. And then you also have a very unique NATO option for both the 40 millimeter and the 42 millimeter uh, or 65. Which both use 20 millimeter lugs. Yes. Or 20 millimeter I think the other one is like 21 millimeter. Oh, really? It kind of random. It could be Maybe. wrong. Yeah, I think it's a oh. random size. Uh, yeah. But we're, we're going to talk about the 40 today. I think the 40 is the perfect size. I have a seven and a half, uh, seven and a quarter inch wrist. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, any other thoughts? Because you've seen this before you saw it. it yeah, it I nice. mean, oh man, I don't Where do I. I love the lugs. I love that kind of vintage. The, the lugs and kind of the, the end links kind of, I mean, obviously they remind me of vintage pieces. They really remind me of the, uh, the Omega 300 reissue, yeah. which, which is such a badass watch too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the sapphire crystal, I love the domed sapphire crystal. I love how it gives that vintage charm where it kind of distorts the dial a little bit. It plays with the dial. Yeah, on the it edges of the well. dial when you kind of look at it from the side. Um, what else? I love the... the the numerals, the three six nine twelve, I think they're I think they look sick. Mm -hmm. um, I love the loom. I love how they didn't go overboard with kind of that like aged loom look. It's just yeah. a little. It's a kind of like it's an off white patina. It's it's almost greenish. Ever in so certain slightly. Lights. Yeah. It's odd. I don't know if that's just the way the loom was generated, or they were trying to colorize it a certain way to make it look vintage, look more like a heritage piece. Um, yeah, but let me go ahead and give you. Oh, you want to wear, you want to wear I wanna, it? I'm just going to say something about it. Go, you go ahead first. Oh, no. Um, so, guys, having this on the wrist for a while, I'm going to tell you a few of the things I don't like um, just to counteract some of the praise that you've been hearing. Um, however, I second everything um, Adam said. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant watch. And like I said, it's, it's like this close to perfection. Um, and if it were perfect, I, I probably wouldn't want it. <laughs> but, guys, it is the quintessential sport watch. It has these beautiful straight lugs, and it's brushed to perfection on top, polished, high polish on the sides, big crown, easy to grab, nice bezel, tinny sounding bezel, perfect action. Guys, it's beautiful sweeping seconds hand, 
There's a nice gloss black dial. These are all prices. I lied to you. <laughs> Let me get to a few things I don't like. The bezel, a little wobbly, a little loose. The crown, oddly a little loose. When you're, you're working it out of the uh, of, a, of its screw there, and you, you go to turn it, you'll notice it's almost like a, a Vostok amphibian. It, it kind of, the head of the crown is a little loose. Go ahead and, and wind it a little bit. It's, it's already tight, but it's like a little loose. When you pull it out to adjust the tire, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. there is a little bit of play. It's odd. Oh. I don't know why that is. Maybe that was a design feature, but that's loose. If that bothers you, eh. Um, and guys, yeah. there's another thing I want to show you on the dial here. Um, and I know why they did it, and um, it was an interesting stylistic choice, but this, these are all minor minor niggles, and, and you know, they, they either bother you or they don't, and they don't seriously bother me, but Swiss Made, on that minute track, guys, you could have put Swiss Made at the bottom, but you put it on the minute track, it's, uh, it, when you're adjusting the time, or you're setting the time on this watch, and it's anywhere between 25 minutes and 35 minutes, it's really hard to tell what minute you're putting the minute hand on, because Swiss made is not strategically lined up. It had to have been order. an oversight, because you could have easily, they could have easily put that between the 35 and the, Swiss between the 35 and the 6, and mm. then made between the 6 and the 25, you know? Yeah, yeah. Even if it means smaller text, you know, but um, I love, I love where the date window is though, so you yeah, were mentioning that too. Yeah, it's completely, um, it's completely symmetrical. The way this dial is set up, and that's why the Swiss made is set there, because there's no extraneous text, or and, and the dial is completely clean this way, so I get it. But that's, that's one minor complaint, otherwise it's it's really heaven. Like the solid end links are great. They're flush against the body. There's a little bit of clearance between them and the lugs, so it sort of floats on the wrist. Um, the bracelet itself is very lightweight, although it's completely solid steel. The the head is very lightweight, so it fits on the wrist nice, uh, nicely. It doesn't um, you know, throw itself around. It's it's just extremely comfortable on the wrist and, and very easy to wear. And I've said this about my Oris TT1. Uh, this is the most comfortable watch I've ever owned. Um, but it's little brother, the Aura 65, stole that from it. This mm -hmm. is honestly the, the most wearable watch I've ever had. And, yeah. and before you got rid of your GMT, you know, it's funny because I, I mentioned mm -hmm. it earlier uh, off camera to Adam, but when his uh, GMT came in with that uh, light Rolex bracelet, the vintage Rolex bracelet, it was, it was the most comfortable thing I'd ever worn because it was lightweight and it, it just sank into your wrist yep. very comfortably and it's the same feel exactly on this heritage piece yeah and uh so or if that's what you were going for you you hit it spot on so if you want the feel of a six thousand dollar pre ceramic rolex gmt just go ahead and get yourself an or 65 and the thing is you know this is modern so those links are tight um you know this is going to yeah. wear and, and, and be durable for many years to come. I fully anticipate that that will outlast me if I decide to keep it that long. Yeah. I haven't made up my mind yet. You know, it's Like I said, it's so close to perfection, and I've had a watch that I thought was perfect, which is the, oh, the Sin 556i. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. It's actually about the bottom, the baseline model for the Zen Sin range. Um, but it, it's the fit, finished action of the crown. It was just a marvelous watch. It's so nice that I, um, I just couldn't keep it. Um, and I'm sort of getting that vibe with the Oris. I, I don't like things that are that great because it makes me never want to wear my other watches, as odd as that is. Well, you know what's interesting too, like to know if you're someone who's in the market for like a thousand-ish dollar watch, mm. but this is like going to be your one great watch, like, oh man, I don't know if I can think of a better contender for like... Best watch under a thousand. Yeah. Or if you if you we don't do those things here. If, but. if you want to have you know like this is going to be your one watch. This is your one nice kind of Swiss watch, and you don't want to spend you know four thousand dollars on a Tudor or five six seven eight whatever on a Rolex, like and you love the vintage charm of these heritage pieces. Mm. Like man, this thing this thing is a home run. You know that could comfortably be. Yeah, I'm not a one watch guy either, and that's what's sort of drawing me away from it. It's um, it's really great. It could easily be the singular watch I keep in my collection, even with its faults, even with those those minor faults I mentioned. It's a it's a fabulous watch, as particularly because it's price range. You know, you can pick them up on the used market anywhere from nine hundred to twelve hundred. You can even buy some new 
for about 1200 uh, during some sales or promotional periods. Like right now, we're, we're near President's Day during the recording of this. You could pick up one of these on a bracelet for, I think, 1300 from um, Joma Shop and some other. And you say carriers. that this this is running, what, plus one second over the last yeah. like, 24 hours or yeah. so? And we mentioned this in another video. Uh, yeah. All our orises, I don't know how they regulate them. Spot on. Like, yeah, the time accuracy on. is spot on. Yep. Uh, this watch in particular is extremely accurate. Yeah, and you know the thing too is is they have the forty two millimeter one too, but man, this forty is literally like the perfect size watch. It is. It really it's, is. It's, and it's the same it's as your, the the Rolex sports watch, which yeah. is forty. Yeah, yeah, it's so versatile. Like, and this will fit under a cuff for sure. And you guys can probably see how, how thin, thin that is. Yeah. Thin that watch is, and I mean, look at that. That's that's perfect. I love I love it so much. I mean, I'm probably not gonna buy one just because I have so many freaking other watches. And this, like you said, it's almost like too perfect. Like I would, I would want this watch to be kind of like my daily kind of one watch, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. guys, if you don't feel that way, uh, this it, for sure this is great to add to the collection. This is this is for its price range, like value, looks, everything, feel. This is a ten out of ten, in my opinion. And that's interesting because, like, a lot of people, you know, you might not have even heard of Oris. It's certainly not. Um, as well known a brand as some of its competitors uh, for its price range. Yeah. But I have to say, you're getting your money's worth. You know, what I spent on this watch um, was a fraction of what it normally cost, and I'm extremely satisfied. You know, my issue is I can't, I can't stop looking at it. I keep walking into things. You know what's funny though, like, <laughs> the, sure. uh, in New York City, I mean, Oris is killing the advertising game. Oh my I see gosh. at every, like, not every, but at a lot of bus stops. And uh, in the subway, I see these Oris. I've seen a 65 ad, and I've seen the Oris Big Crown Pilot ads. Yeah. I, like I see them everywhere. Yeah. So they're doing they're doing all right. So they're I mean I think they're so kind guys, of slowly kind of become like more of a not a household name, but you know they're they're a great Swiss company. No, and the, yeah, I'm and they're glad. still independent, which is why they can charge these prices. They're not owned by Swatch Group, you know, like half of the other damn brands are. They're still independent and can create their own really, really great product mm -hmm. and not charge a ridiculous premium. And well, that you know, is because, so. and this is like, and, and this might be a problem for other people, but you know, and that's because it's, it's borrowing a, a movement, you know, right. it's, it's modifying a, a quality movement. And right. for me, I prefer to have a modified quality movement like an Eta 2824 or a Salita SW200 as opposed to an in-house movement. Yeah. Because one, a lot more people can service it. Easily, yeah. Two, um, the movements they're borrowing from are tried and true. So yep. if you want a workhorse movement in a beautiful everyday watch, I mean, you've definitely found it with the Or 65, in my opinion. This is the 40 millimeter variant. I couldn't speak for the 42 millimeters. I, I haven't worn or lived with one, so yeah. it's hard to say. However, there are a variety of colors. You can get the same dial face with a light blue uh, outer ring. You can also get the 42s in a blue, a green, a, a silver now. Mm -hmm. You can get, of course, black. Um, right. There's there's a ton of options. So Oris is really doing, uh, you know, even with their Aquas line, you get a ton of options. Um, they're really a great brand and a great watch. So Agreed. feel comfortable in picking one up. Uh, and guys, if, if it isn't to your liking, trust me, you'll get your money's worth back. Yeah. Anyway, guys, so that's that's my uh, complete thought. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the 65 or my time with it, feel free to ask a, a question in the comments down below. If you want to see some pictures of it and or our other watches, you can follow us on Instagram at Clock, Stock, and Barrel. It's the same name. Or you can find a link to our Insta on the homepage. On that homepage, you can also subscribe, but you can't just like there. If you <laughs> dislike or like this, hit it now. Um, at any rate, guys, thank you for joining us on this, on this review. Um, you can tell... We're pretty taken with this piece. Uh, maybe I'll loan it around. <laughs> it's, just, it's such an interesting... I don't know what I'm going to do with it, though, guys. I really don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's, uh, it's sort of perfect. Yeah. Damn you, Oris. Why are you <laughs> making such good watches? Anyway, guys, thank you again for joining us. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.